connecting. We've got Stuart Smith from Presenting Lean Benefits Realisation Management, and he's from Working Group. He's also authored a publication made by Syria about Lean in 2011, and uh, I'll pass it over to you, Stuart. Okay, thanks, Iron. Um, just a little bit of background. I've been working in lean process improvement now for uh, over 25 years. And latterly, although I started in manufacturing, latterly spent uh, a lot of time in the construction sector, uh, working with client organisations and supply chains, uh, such as the Highways Agency uh, and its, its supply chain, implementing lean improvements uh, throughout their organisations. So I wanted to talk uh, about uh, Lean Benefits Realisation Management, which was a, a guide that was written really because there is no universally um, acceptable guide uh, for Lean in the construction sector at this point. And of course the reason that most people undertake Lean is uh, to make improvements to their organisation and those improvements obviously come through in the form of benefits and uh, obviously realising those benefits is, is what Lean's all about. So, why is Lean Benefit Realisation Management important? If we leave it to chance, then there's a good chance that we won't actually generate the benefits that we're looking for. And so, Lean Benefits Realisation Management is a systematic way of ensuring that the outcomes of Lean are delivered and uh, not just left to chance. And when we talk about uh, benefits, we're talking about something that's advantageous to stakeholders. So, not surprisingly, stakeholder management is a big part of the Lean Benefits Realisation Management Planning. Um, Lean is increasingly becoming a, a preferred business improvement methodology within the construction sector. Uh, many clients now use it and uh, their supply chains have picked it up not just because they're being forced to do by, the, by their clients but also by uh, because they've realised that it's important for them to deliver benefits to their organisation as well. Um, the challenge now really, I think, within the industry is to try and move away from doing isolated improvements in Lean towards creating a systematic delivery of, of a Lean culture. And uh, many improvements have been done within organisations that can point to uh, Lean projects, they can point to isolated improvements, but really the challenge now is to move on to some sort of systematic delivery. And, of course, when people are looking at Lean and whether they should go about uh, embarking on a lean program, which is quite a big commitment for many organisations, uh, there has to be a reason for doing it. There has to be a, a what's in it for me, and often that is really around what benefits can I generate for my organisation, for my customers, for my stakeholders. And if we set out on a lean implementation by thinking about the benefits we're going to generate for our stakeholders, for our organisation, then we're much more likely to succeed because we have a common motivation, a common goal, and there's this impetus to maintain continuous improvement as we as we go. And you know there are there are sticking points when implementing lean. It, it is difficult uh, often to get the momentum moving. And if we can focus on the benefits and the why we're doing it, then obviously it's a much better way of engaging the organisation. So why is Lean different than any other sort of uh, improvement project that you might do within an organisation? And I think the, there are several things that are different, particularly in, in the construction sector. And the first thing is that, you know, if we set out on a simple implementation project like implementing a, uh, an IT, new IT system, um, we're implementing what might be thought of as a known solution to a known problem. But Lean is, is different than that. Quite often, uh, 
we're dealing with symptoms initially. So a team might be looking at the symptoms of a problem that are uh, in existence. And we don't really know what the solution is. We've often, we don't even know what the exact root cause is. And, and there are a lot of tools in Lean that, are, that help us to get to the root cause of the problem because if we can solve the root cause of the problem, then we're going to get a much better solution rather than just solving symptoms. And so with Lean, quite often we don't know initially what the problem is or what the solution is and therefore what the benefits are likely to be of that. But of course, we can talk to stakeholders. We can talk to customers of of the process and we can identify what it is that uh, they're seeking out of the process that we're, we're undertaking. And so you know, benefits can be established from the stakeholder perspective. But also other benefits often come out during a lean improvement activity. They emerge during the, the, the process. And so it's, it's quite often difficult to define precisely at the start of a lean project what it is that is going to... Uh, emerge in terms of benefits. Now the second point is that Lean is really a a philosophy. It's a a change in the way that we do things in an organisation. And and often that is a cultural change. And so when we make a Lean improvement within an organisation, the benefits can be really far-reaching and often much further than the, uh, the initial intended target. And so those improvements can be often appear unrelated to the original activity that we started on. And often when we go through a complete lean transformation, and lean becomes the way we do things, it becomes business as usual, of course it's very, very difficult then to attribute benefits specifically to actions that we've undertaken. And so that's another reason why it's quite difficult to relate benefits to uh, actions within the lean activity. The third point is is really specific to the construction environment, which is, uh, I think, very uh, contractual, and it's often adversarial in the way that, that organisations work together in joint ventures, uh, client, contractor, subcontractor relationships. Um, and so getting people to really be clear and open about the benefits when and, and declaring those benefits when they've undertaken the lean improvements, often coloured by vested interest because of that contractual relationship. So three reasons there why it's different and it's difficult to do lean benefits realisation within the construction sector. So I said earlier we needed a systematic approach and uh, this diagram here really describes a three-level approach that I'm proposing in the in the guide. Uh, quite often, people will undertake a lean improvement. They'll try and capture the benefits specific to that lean improvement, and they'll aggregate it up into a total figure. So, in other words, they leap directly from level three to level one. What I'm suggesting here is something that is very rarely done within the construction sector, but is often done in other lean implementations. And this is really an analysis of the value streams. And so, by thinking about a lean improvement benefits in these terms, in these three levels, we can make sure that we uh, aggregate the, the benefits in a structured way. So, level one, we're talking about the strategic objectives. So, what is it that, at the project or program or organisation level, what is the core purpose of the organisation? And what are the the value streams that deliver that core purpose? So, thinking about uh, an organisation, those value streams might be uh, how do we manage the delivery of our service or product from end to end? How do we manage the collection of cash from end to end? How do we uh, maintain our uh, assets from end to end? So we're thinking in core values, big value stream levels. 
Once we've identified what those value streams are, we can map the value stream as it is today. We can understand how does it operate from end to end. What are the value-adding parts of that activity? What are the non-value-adding parts of that activity? And so we can assess the performance of our value stream. This is often called current state, current state mapping. Understanding how our value streams are performing and the level of waste and the level of efficiency that is being achieved. When we've mapped our value streams, often that's a great pointer to where we need to focus to improve. And I move now to the third level. When we undertake lean improvements, they are often at the value stream level. And we might undertake a series of improvements throughout the value stream using different tools and techniques. We might use a Kaizen Blitz approach. We might do a, a more lengthy project using data. So uh, making those improvements are actually ways of improving the way we deliver the value stream. When we've made those improvements, and in fact, as we are planning to make those improvements, we can create what we call a future state map. So current state, future state. By comparing the two, we get a real a comparison of the performance of that value stream it might take less time to process activities through that value stream, it might take less resource, it might improve the quality of the output. So we can assess the current state and the future state. The difference between the two, the delta, is the uh, benefit that we are generating by improving that value stream through a series of lean improvements. Looking at the left-hand side of this chart, you can see a couple of reconciliations there. First one I've called the fuzzy reconciliation. This is essentially a way of comparing the individual improvement events with the overall improvement in the value stream. Quite often we try and quantify improvements, particularly in financial terms, and aggregate them right up to organization level without checking to see that there's been a real improvement in the value stream that we're trying to deliver. So first step is let's do that reconciliation. Let's check that we are seeing the improvement at the individual level in, at the value stream level. Then we can undertake a much harder reconciliation between the metrics at the value stream level and those at the organization level program or project level through this hard reconciliation, looking at very specific KPIs. And by using this three-stage approach, we're much more likely to get an overall view and make sure that we collect the benefits properly rather than just adding up all the island activities, improvement activities that we've done at level three. And so, the three-level approach really is about avoiding just adding up individual lean improvements, totting them up uh, into a financial number, but really going through this structured approach to track and compare the direction and scale of improvement and the specific KPI improvements up to organization level. Very often organizations that are undertaking lean will the individual improvements being claimed by practitioners, but actually the bottom line doesn't change. And of course, uh, senior management are looking for improvements in bottom line, they're looking for improvements in the way the organisation operates, and of course they're looking for improvements in the way that they service and satisfy their customers. And by going through this three-stage approach, we're much more likely to be able to link improvements bottom up to the strategic organizational objectives. In the guide, there are quite a few useful tools and techniques uh, described, and uh, I would uh, recommend that you, you look at these uh, tools within the guide in a, bit, in a bit more detail. I just want to focus on three of them here. First of all, the balanced scorecard. Uh, this is a tool that, that's used at the strategic level. It tends to be looking at the process, 
the customer, the finances, and the people aspects of uh, the organization at the strategic level. What is it that we're trying to, to improve? What are our key performance metrics that we want to be looking at? Not just financial, but in a balanced way across the organization. And uh, many organizations may have used or heard of Balanced Scorecard um, do, undertaking it in a really structured way is a good way of capturing high-level KPIs that we can compare over time and track. second one I just wanted to focus on was this concept of voice of the customer. Now, if we think about benefits, who are the arbiters of, of benefits? They are the customers. They are the recipients of the outputs of the process. So, the concept of voice of the customer and the CTQ, that what do they think is critical to quality, is fundamental to benefits realisation because customers are the people who de determine whether, in fact, we've delivered benefits. And when I say customer, they can be internal or external customers. They are the people who really determine whether we are delivering benefits and so forth. When we're undertaking a lean improvement, we should always close the loop with customers by checking what have you seen, what improvement have you seen in the way that we deliver our service or product to you. Third one I wanted to just focus on was policy deployment matrix. This is a, a great tool which is very little used within the construction sector and this tool really is about how do we take our top level measures, our top level objectives and cascade them down in a way right through the organization so that we can implement specific actions and we know that every little improvement we make is being rolled up into the overall company objectives and a policy deployment matrix is a great way of doing this and uh, again this is described in the guide and I would, I would commend it to, to anyone who's looking at uh, implementing uh, lean within the organization. There's a whole range of tools and techniques in there and even more within the, the book Build Lean which will uh, give people some, uh, hopefully some uh, ideas on how best to implement lean within their organisation. Of course, I said earlier that lean is, is not easy. It's easy in concept but it's difficult to do and quite often people get stuck when they're implementing lean um, on issues like uh, these that I've listed here. So again, just let me focus on two or three areas. Um, people may think that value stream analysis is um, very complicated to do, and if you look in the guide, there are a couple of examples there of current state and the future state. And uh, yes, they do require a certain amount of expertise to undertake them, and uh, they are not easy to do because you need to get hold of data, you need to understand the process. And of course, how can you make an improvement to a process if you don't really understand it? So value stream analysis is really quite fundamental and it's very little done within the construction sector but uh, often done within other sectors and so manufacturing has been uh, undertaking value stream analysis for, for a long time. It needs to be done in a different way within the construction sector. It tends to be done around phases of work rather than uh, particular areas within a, within a process. So uh, value stream analysis often will not have been done within an organization and it is something that really needs to be done and uh, uh, you know, understanding how to do it properly is, is very valuable. So start with a simple area of the business and map it out, understand how it performs currently think about how it could perform if you took the waste out and you would have a, a, a simple current state and future state map with some data behind it uh, so that you could see as you make improvements what happens to that data. Um, often people will say we don't know how to evaluate benefits. You know, we, how do we capture the benefit of a lean improvement? And people uh, really sometimes don't think out of the box enough. I mean, uh, benefits are 
uh, generated through lien improvements, often they're not all counted. Quite often the financial cost of a lien improvement is, is very visible. But the benefits are often in the mind of the, the stakeholder, the customer. And so one of the first things we should do is engage with stakeholders about the process and understand what do they really care about out of this process. Let's spend some time brainstorming with them how our process delivers the outputs that meets those care abouts. And we use tools like more of or less of analysis. You know, when we've made this improvement, we'll get more of this and less of that. So that uh, stakeholders can say, ah, oh, right, okay, so I'm going to get more of on-time delivery, less of delays. I'm going to get more of uh, good quality, less defects. I'm going to get uh, more predictable schedules. I'm going to get less variation. So by understanding what we're going to get more of and less of, that's a great way of, of evaluating benefits. And again, you know, using an experienced lean practitioner when you're doing this really makes all the difference. So, quite a few challenges uh, and a few top tips as to how to go about overcoming them. In the guide, we've put a few uh, good case studies in there. Uh, first of all, one from the Highways Agency, which was really about a program of uh, projects within the supply chain um, to take waste out of processes, reduce the time taken to undertake schemes and, and improve the quality, and to deliver financial savings. And so far, the, the agency has audited its financial savings of over £60 million, pounds, and there's a further £30 million in the pipeline still to be, uh, still to be generated, but which is actually being, being delivered as we speak. So fantastic benefits there. And, uh, you know, a lot more potential to go, I'm sure. People in the highways agency really would say we're, we're just scratching the surface. We have made some fantastic progress, but we can still go further. The second example, BAA Heathrow Terminal 5. Fantastic examples there of time and quality benefits to stakeholders. CapEx savings and uh, operational savings. Which, which happen year after year. CapEx tend to be a one-off saving, cash flow saving. So, fantastic benefits there from undertaking lean. And the return on investment seems to be really good on these lean improvements. The highways agency is seeing something like a 20 to 1 return on investment, which is a phenomenal way if you've got to spend money improving, you want to see the payback for it. So, fantastic return on investment. Third example here, Ministry of Justice, uh, managing the, the estates within the, uh, the justice system. Uh, improvements to project cost and time, uh, cost reduction in, in the way that they, uh, they manage the asset and maintain it, and £154 million pounds worth of project cost savings. Fantastic examples of, of benefits there. And, uh, you know, you can see from, from these examples that uh, we make improvements for, to customers, we take waste out, we make time improvements. But the ones that really hit senior management between the eyes are the financial savings because that's uh, often the way that they are judged. And so monetary savings uh, tend to be very, very high on, on the agenda for senior, senior management. So in conclusion then, um, the benefits realisation management is something that is uh, a systematic way of implementing lean. It's a systematic way of capturing and collecting benefits. And if you think about it right up front in your lean deployment, then it can change the way that you set about undertaking lean improvements because you focus on those that are going to deliver the biggest benefits for the least input. In other words, you can prioritise activity better you can create the right portfolio of improvements within your deployment plan, and you can deliver benefits which will really make senior management stand up and say, hey, that was worth doing.
Okay.